when you look at me or when other people look at me or see me, you're not looking at me. What I want you to see in me is Jesus Christ Amen. all the time. I'm going to go a little bit back for the last time I preached. If you weren't here, you'll get something, I hope, fresh and new. But I preached on Luke chapter 15. It's the parable of the lost sheep. And the Holy Spirit gave me the title of that one. Amen. That one. But I understand now how Pastor Paul stayed in Mark 4 for so long. <laughs> Seriously. I cannot move out of, out, of, out of Luke 15. So today, Holy Spirit gave me a little bit to that. That one and the 99. We always, we always, well, I ain't going to say we. I've always looked at it as that lost sheep. I never thought about the 99. Why he was able to leave 99. Why he was able to leave that one. I mean, leave that 99 and go after that one. And if you look at it, the story doesn't say that the 99 wandered off. One, one, another one went one way, another one went another way. Was it another shepherd there to guard them? 99. You go after that one to that 99. You know what happened to that 99? Look around this room. We are a part of that 99. Whew, get this. We are part of that 99 where God said, oh, I ought to put it in you that I can trust you to follow me and do what I've called you to do. We're that 99. He can give you things and put things in your life knowing you're going to stand the test of time. At any It don't say how long the shepherd had to go and look for that one. It don't say how long. But just imagine, what if it was a storm, a wolf came by, and that 99 never moved. Why? He trusted his shepherd. Woo! He trusted his shepherd. So why when we, I mean, I ain't gonna put y'all there. Me, <laughs> when things come up, and they do come up, I get rattled. Why? Why? Trust in the Lord at all times. At all times. Lean not out on understanding, but in all ways, always acknowledge, and he will direct us that's what the shepherd did with the 99 and the 1. Do you not know? Let me, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, help me, help me, help me. Mm. Go to Luke chapter 15, verse 1. I'm, I got I to gotta read it first. I'm going to read it out of the uh, Amplified. Last time I read it out of the King James. And then I'm gonna, I want to read it out of the uh, Message Bible too. So just bear with me. Last time I, I talked about it, I, I, I preached this. You got to understand people, I mentioned about people are searching for, for Jesus and don't even know it. 
because they're looking at it in, in, in everything that the world has to offer, thinking that's going to fulfill them. I'm going to throw both my hands up because that was me. That was me. Now, the tax collectors, notorious and especially wicked, but they were there looking. They wanted to see this Jesus. Came near to, to Jesus to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes kept muttering, indignantly complaining, saying, this man accepts and receives and welcomes wicked sinners and eats with them. But you still there listening. When people in your job or wherever you may be, hear you witnessing to somebody else, as what we say when, when, we're, we're, when I work with our kids, when we say we ear hustle. <laughs> we ear hustle. You playing, you playing cards or games with them, they having a conversation, you, you know. That's what the Pharisees were doing. They didn't want to be seen, but they was listening. Everybody wants to know this Jesus. Everybody is searching for him and looking for him, but they looking and searching the wrong way. We found him because we know it was the only way. Could nobody get us out of what we got out of unless Jesus got us out of it. Amen? So he told him a parable. What man of you, if he has a hundred sheep, and shall lose one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness or desert and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. Hmm. The good shepherd chased me down for 36 years until I gave my life to it. How long did he chase you? You get it. He never gives up on you. God sent his only begotten son. He left heaven. He left heaven to come down and get us. He left heaven. Well, we want to go. He knew we couldn't get there the way we was living, so he come down and show us how to live to get to it. Thirty-six years. Thirty-six years. That's just me. I'm talking about from the time I was born to the time I gave my life to Christ. I was 36 years old. I'm 55 years old. And I never look back after 36. When, 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 when I had my heart attack, I, I always look back over that, that, that point in my life because it was, it, was, it was more serious than I made it out to be. It was heart pains every day. It was me walking from here to that door and having to sit down because my heart would beat so I couldn't catch my breath. It was me responding to a crisis at work. Got to go up like 72 flight of stairs. And when I get there, I got to sit down for 20 minutes before I even intervene in a situation. It was me and my supervisor going to a restaurant three hours away. All you can eat, I eat. And the whole ride back, I'm having a heart attack in the back seat, not even knowing it, bent over for straight three hours. Three hours. Get home, get back to my job. Threw up before I got in my car from having the heart attack. Gets in my truck, go pick my daughter at work who she got off. Threw up again because I was still having a heart attack. Get home and have to sit on the side of the bed in a, 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 a complete sweat like I'm in a sauna until my heart finally calms down and I'm able to lay down and go to sleep. That's all in one day. Now, I'm not talking about the times at work when I have, I'm, I'm just holding a kid, he's struggling, 
And my heart is beating so fast, I'm thought about it, burst, about to burst out my chest. Then when the other staff intervened, I sit down. I got to sit down for 30 minutes just to recuperate. And you don't think the enemy didn't want me to come to this point to be here to talk to you? We have an enemy. We can't die. There's no ifs and, there's no ifs and buts about it. We have an enemy. But we also have a Lord too. <laughs> we also have a Lord that, that protects us. Watches over us. Never leaves us. Ever. Ever. When I came out of the hospital after that, I know I'm a little off, but this is the way the Holy Ghost is, is, is moving me right now. When I got done with my open heart surgery, they had, what do you call it, Joy? The thing that, I was intubated. So you're supposed to be that on that thing at least, from what I hear, maybe three, four days. Soon as I wake up out of anesthesia, I'm choking. I'm choking, and they literally had to take it out because I was already breathing on my own. Already. I didn't need to be intubated. I had God on the inside of me. I was already intubated. <laughs> I was already. But but if, if, if we can get past the doubting, God said, don't doubt. We cannot doubt God. We cannot. He's too good to us. For him to send his only son, knowing the stuff we was going to do, even, even everything that was presented to us and everything that we knew about it, and we still did what we did, and you still go to the cross for us? If God won't give up on us, we can't give up on the loss. Does it get frustrating? Yes. Does it get disappointed? Yes. You think my grandmother didn't get disappointed, frustrated? Did she stop praying? No. Did she see it before it happened? Yes. Mm -mm. She was already gone to heaven then. She never saw, she never saw me get saved. She was already in heaven, but she never stopped praying. Amen. She never stopped believing. Hallelujah. She never stopped trusting God that it was going to manifest, and it did. Hallelujah. Don't give up. On the worst of people that you think that well, there's no way he can get, there's no way he or she can get saved. Look at what they're doing. That's not our job. Amen. Judge ye not, lest you be judged. Amen. We're not the judge. God is. Amen. You just do what the Holy Spirit tell you to do. Pray, shake the hand, hey, how you doing? Whatever it led, whatever it's being led for you to say or do, that's what you do, and you move on. Don't get worked up, oh, I, I want to see it. No, it ain't for you to see. It's not for us. It's for him. Everything is for him. We just get, we just reap the benefits. We get, we spoil little kids. <laughs> we spoil little kids. We are. We just spoil little kids. Enjoying the ride of the father. That's it. Daddy, take us there. Okay. Verse 5, and when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoice. All of heaven, when I study this out, when one sinner gets born again saved, all of heaven rejoices. All of heaven rejoices. And when he gets home, he summons together his friends and his neighbors saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found my sheep which was lost. Thus I tell you there will be more joy in heaven over one especially wicked person who repents and changes minds, adhering to the errors and misdeeds and determines to enter upon before, I mean better, because of life, 
than over 99 righteous persons who have not, who have no need of repentance. Just one. But what, what can one do? One turned in at 99. That's what that one did. What can one do? Oh, oh God, I'm just one person. And see, you gotta, you gotta, ooh, Lord Jesus. You gotta, you gotta accept some of the positions that God had, got put us in. See, like in football, I, I, I was known as a, well, they call them D tackles now. But back in my day, we did, well, I'm going to teach a little football. Right now. Okay. <laughs> so back in my day, we played what we call a 3-4 defense. We had three D linemen, four linebackers. Now they got four, four linemen and five. Yeah, it's way too complicated. But I was considered what they call a nose guard, nose tackle. I'm right over the center. And my primary job, Listen to this. My primary job was whatever I, whatever you do, do not let this center get to your linebacker. What? He said, yep, this is your position. I get double team. If I got this and I'm here and they got two goals, two out of the three, I'm going to have to beat. Every single play. If it, was pla if it was a pass play, I got to beat all three. But I played my position. In the beginning, I didn't like it. In the beginning, we didn't like it. We had to give up a lot of stuff that we had enjoyed for a long time. A lot of stuff. But the more I played that position, the more I fell in love with that position. The more you play God's position, come on, church. We're a place, like I said last time I preached, we're a place where people are, are, are searching and looking, and we're going places. Pastor can't go, I can't go, you can't go, but we're placed in places to make a difference in people's lives, and we're there for a reason. Let the Holy Spirit play in your position with you to show you how to win the loss because that's what it's all about. Amen. People don't die and go to hell by the minute. I can't sit back and hear teenager after teenager after teenager that I work with dying and not knowing Jesus Christ. Do I offend people at work? Yes, so be it. Do they try and do stuff to make me mad or get me upset? So be it. No, I have the love of Christ in me. Now you to call me back in and yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't so slow tipping. Um, them funny story. I, I, I just had a situation with a kid. Punched me in my ribs, hit me in the head, beat up my truck. Thank you, brother. <laughs> and and there are all the staff, we ain't gonna say all a lot of staff, like, oh boy, if that was me, I'd have did this, I'd have did that, I did that. I said, I'm saying to myself, I see a soul that is hurting, that is <laughs> that is lost that think he don't have nobody or nothing. And this is the only way he can express how he need help. We got to wake up, church. I said it before. We are being too lukewarm as a church, and I'm not talking about no building. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about us. When the Holy Spirit said move, we got to move. Because we might not get that time again. 
We miss it. It's too late. Think about the people that reach you with the gospel. Think about how many people talk to you or how many times you had to go to a church or however. Just think about how many people poured into your life. I remember when I first got saved here, pastor told me, <laughs> he said, you're going to preach in two weeks. I'm like, what, huh? What? I don't mean, no, I don't, I don't, I don't preach. <laughs> I got, I got nervous is all get out. But pastor, with the help of the Holy Ghost, so something in me that I didn't see in myself. That's why we got to lean, more than ever now, we got to lean and depend on the Holy Ghost. We got to. Because we can't afford the missing opportunity. Time is short. We don't have time to waste time. We don't have time to waste time. Jesus is mounting up. The trumpets are being prepared. Shining them. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Woo. Come on, grandmama. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the king. Love testimony service at the Kojic Church. Love them testimonies. This church lasts way too long. <laughs> Oh, YPWW on Wednesday, uh, choir practice on Saturday. But as a collective group of 99, just think about how much more we can advance the kingdom of God. That, them 99 sheep had to work together. Because I can imagine maybe two or three of them wanted to go this way, but the other group wanted to go this way, but they they just gravitated with each other and just moved in, in, in one accord. One accord. Do you not know, when I was studying this about this, If the shepherd wouldn't have left the 99 to go find that one, they said when, that, when the sheep, one of them go off like that, when I studied this, they never return or know how to get back. They never return or know how to return to get back to where they left. So if you if that if the shepherd don't find him, he's done. Whoo! If Jesus wouldn't have did what he did. <laughs> Woo! If Jesus <laughs> wouldn't have did what he did, that's why I asked the question, where would you be if it had not been for the Lord? If he hadn't have found us in the slave market, we'd have still been in the slave market. Not knowing how to get out of it. Just like that one sheep. Then when they knew how to return. He'd have been lost forever. But grace. Grace came down. Said not today Satan. Not today. 
That's why I am the way I am. I don't expect everybody to be like me, but I, 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 I love the Lord. Amen. Just like I said, I loved everything about, about playing my position. I loved everything about football. I had a coach ask me one time, he said, you're just the happiest player I ever seen. I said, you understand, I've been wanting to do this since I was like nine years old. So now that I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy, I'm in love with everything there is about God. Amen. No exceptions. Do I struggle? Absolutely. Do I fall? Absolutely. Do I mess up? Absolutely. But grace. Ninety-nine. <laughs> Ninety-nine sheep obeyed they shepherd. And he left them knowing they were gonna be all right. Why do you think Jesus went to the cross? He said, when I leave, I'm not leaving you. I'm leaving you a helper, but I got to go, but I know you're going to be all right. <laughs> I know you're going to be all right. When he said, when the Bible told my iron sharpened iron, that's why this, this, forsake not the assembly of the church. I need this. I don't know about you, but where I work at and the things I hear and the things the kids say to me that I hear that I don't want to hear, I need this. <laughs> I need to see familiar faces and people that are on the same level and, and talk about the same things that I talk about. I don't get that at my job. I don't. People that change their conversations when I come around, thank you, Lord. It ain't me. Because it would, if they just saw me as me and not who I was and the way I live my life, oh, yeah, them conversations keep going. But we different. We're peculiar. Yeah. Them 99 was peculiar. Because I'm, I'm just imagine, just think if it was another herd of, of, of sheep coming by and the shepherd coming by and they look over there like, who 99 sheep is there? <laughs> well, them ain't mine. And just keep it. But just, yeah, seriously. For them 99 to stay put and trust God with no shepherd, no protection right there, the wolves could have came, but whatever, lions, whatever. They felt comfortable enough to stay where the shepherd left them. When you open up the word of God, don't just say, oh, well, I'm going to read this. No, Holy Spirit, give me revelation. No, give me more revelation of your word. Don't just let me hear this and read words on a page. Speak to me through your word. Talk to me. It guide me, encourage me, strengthen me. We need it. You can't walk this walk today and not be in your word and pray it up every single day. You cannot. You will not be successful on a day. But I know when I slip, if I don't get in my word first thing in the morning and I leave the house and I don't do it, I knew I know the soon as I get to the gym or where I'm going and somebody say something or something don't go right. Yeah, I didn't read and pray this morning, Lord. I'm human. We all human. But I like it, Pastor said, obedience in the middle of the word obedience is die. Them 99 sheep died to themselves. They could have went and did their own thing. I remember I had some, uh, nah, my buddies. And I love them. They like brothers to me. They taught my brother. It was five of them. And uh, if one did one thing, <laughs> the other four was going to follow suit. But that's what I'm saying. These sheep, just, I mean, to, to stay as a group, to trust their shepherd, it could have been another one wanted to go away. Two could have went with him. Another one could have said, oh, I'm going to walk away too. Three or four could have went with him. We, 
as the body of Christ have to be so in tune with the word of God now, with each other. People coming in here every day, I mean every Sunday, hurting, struggling, fighting. Every Sunday. But they hear. They hear. They didn't quit. They didn't give up. They didn't leave the church. They didn't leave Jesus Christ. They hear still searching and praising God for everything that he didn't let happen that could have happened. Just like them 99, anything could have happened, but they still trust it. That's us. We ain't going to worry about what could have happened. We know what's going to happen, and that's we're going home. Yeah. This is not our home. Yeah. We just visiting. Amen. We just passing through. <laughs> like a surfer on a wave. Eventually that wave going to end, and we out of here. We out of here. But if you speak that to some people that don't know, they think you're crazy. Yeah, I am. I'm peculiar. The Bible calls me peculiar. But don't get offended. If anybody got any reason to be offended, it's Jesus Christ. <laughs> if anybody, I have no reason a kid called me out of my name, I got no reason to get mad at him. Or just anybody in general. I'm part of that 99. I'm part of that 99 that the shepherd can trust me. Amen. You're part of that 99 that he knows he can trust you. So if he can trust you, why we can't trust him? <laughs> At all times. I ain't talking about sometimes. I'm talking about all times. Yeah. I had to trust God when they split this thing open, I was adamant, you're not cutting my chest open. Who are you? Telling us, you want to die? Or you want to live? You want to be able to walk your daughter down the aisle and give her away? You want to hold your grandbaby? Cut that chest open, doc. <laughs> Cut her. But with, 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 every, with all that happening, with all that happening, I was out of the hospital a week earlier than I supposed to be. I was breathing on my own when I woke up. The enemy is trying to take us out, church. The enemy is trying to take us out because they, he know how, what our value is. He know we're going to get to somebody and give them the good news of Jesus Christ. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a ripple effect. Like when you throw them rocks and they just. So what is going to be? In the last days, that's what it's going to be. It's just going to be a mighty rushing wave of just an outpouring of the spirit. Just Because God said it. I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. All flesh. He ain't picking it. He said all. None should be lost. That's the way we need to think. None should be lost. Because we once were. Glory to God. Glory to God. I got to read something to you here. Let me see if I can find it. This scripture, I know this is this is God and the Holy Ghost because this scripture came to me and then I, it just started being flooded on, on Facebook. But Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I knew you, I formed you in your mother's womb yes, and prepared a place for you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Listen, listen to that. Before, before we even thought about being, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. let me let me get him right. He say he gonna do this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here you go, Blondell boy. This is gonna be your son. He gonna mess up. He gonna do some dumb, crazy stuff as a teenager. He's going to wind up, you know, giving you a couple, you know, some heartaches and you on sleepless nights, but he's going to be all right. But I put my, I put me in him though. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, 
I put I, I put me in him so when when he do mess up and he has nowhere to turn. Yes, Lord. He don't know it yet, but it's going it's going it's just a little seed I'm placing right here in his heart and it's going to grow. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Yes, Lord. Mm. Mm. Oh, I could have went so far south. But before I was even born in my father's womb, you and I, God just knitted. Master craftsman, Hallelujah. what he created in us. Yes, How can you not love a God like that? There's no other. You got a lot of fake ones. But there's none like God. You got a lot of fake ones, but there's none like him. I formed you in your mother's womb. That kept coming up and I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh God, you are doing it something. Because people like... Like in sports, you can get complacent in your craft. We can't get, we don't want, we can't afford to be complacent in our walk. We can't. Even the great, even the greatest David was when he fell and, and did what he did with Bash. He was, he was, he was considered after God's own heart, and look what happened to him. Well, you think we we're not we 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 can't go through that? That can't happen to us. Don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. I'm going to end with this. Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. Lucifer led worship in heaven. But he wanted to be the man. But in order to be the man, you got to beat the man. You couldn't beat the so you got kicked out of heaven and came here with all your cohorts. So that God never wanted to hear anything else from you. None of your worship, none of your praise. As his children, We can mess up. But God wants to hear our praise and our worship. Amen. That was, that was, was leading worship. But now you don't want to hear nothing out of him no more. But yet we can mess up. And God still want to hear from us. Amen. What a merciful God. Hallelujah. What a merciful. Y'all hearing me? The privilege and the honor and the awe that we have, God still, no matter how bad we mess up, he still want to hear from us. He still want to hear from us. Glory be to God. But he shut his ear to a Lucifer who was leading worship in heaven. Kicked him out and don't didn't want to hear him no more. But yet we can fall short and still hear him. We can fall short and still pray to him. We can fall short and still go and ask him, God, help me. We can fall short and say, God, help me. I'm, I don't know what to do. And he answers us. The more we depend on God, the more he surprises us and the results that follow us. The more we completely go after him, the more we see Jesus. We got to keep our eyes on him, folks. Now's not the time to be lukewarm. But God said it was going to be a great falling away, though. In his word, that's what the word says. It's not me. That's what the word says. It's going to be a great falling away. And we're not talking about unbelievers. 
God is talking about the church. You hear pastors up here talk about how all these pastors are just quitting and, and closing churches, all that? That's the church that's falling away. We need every believer's voice. Don't let the enemy think your voice don't matter. I've been there. I ain't nobody going to listen to me. Then I went out to Austin, Texas and played, and I had a young guy who's 20. I call him a kid, but I was like 36. I don't call a grown man a kid. He was like 23, 24, and I just, he asked me, he was like, how do I, you know, get to know Jesus? So I started, you know, witnessing to him. And we would have Bible study. One of the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars uh, player, Brian Schwartz, would come to our, our apartment complex and, and he would do Bible studies with us. And when the young man gave his life to Christ, he was like, you did that. I said, no, I didn't. He said, well, let me tell you, let me change that. God used you to do with that. And when, when I realized that I had more in me, and I thought that's like when Pastor put me up here the first time. Ooh, good. Ooh. You think I'm sweating now? <laughs> but that's what I love about Pastor. When he moves on the Holy Spirit, that's probably who told him to do it. Get him up there. I got something in him, he just don't know it yet. You got something in you that God has placed in you that you don't know yet. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how old you are. You still got something left in you. Just like we tell Alan, you still got something left in the tank. You just don't know it yet. Don't let the devil fool you. You are important to God. You still have an opportunity to witness for God with somebody else that we can't meet, but you are hesitant. Why? What if God was hesitant on you when you asked him to come and relieve whatever you're going through? Mm, mm. stop waiting when the time is right and just go when the time is supposed to be done when God said move move when God said go go when God said don't don't but you gotta move now Woo! this is from the Holy Ghost this ain't me this is, a, this is a warning from your daddy from up here. It's coming. Glory. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That one and the 99. The 99. Just think about that. 99 sheep stayed where they supposed to go. 99. I, I really, I, I, when I get that, when we get up there, I got to ask God. I'm thinking, God, how, how, why they didn't move? Was there a shepherd there with them? Or what did, what, what was it? Because it don't, it don't say. But that stood out. We are that 99. That stands exactly what God wants us to be. Amen.